Okay. okay. Thank you. This is our first bu budget workshop. And Roseanne, would you please call the Mayor Hogan? Here. Yes, Mayor Kennedy. Here. Commissioner Ross. Here. Commissioner Samari. Here. Commissioner Tudor. Here. Um, okay. okay. I would like to eliminate the uh, public comments because I'll call for public comments on every item. Uh, at each item. Public comments is going to come in on each item? Right. They have a right take... to come in on each item, so we don't have to have it now. As each item comes up, I'll call for public comments. Is each, that okay? Each item or each category? Each, each, each category. department? Each, each department? Yes. Okay. okay. And Madam Mayor, is as that I how made, it's always done? It's, no. I don't know. I don't remember that. I don't remember being that uh, way. Pretty much, the, the, the that so we can, we're very flexible, so we can, you know, have a conversation like with the. Madam, ma Madam Mayor, as I made a suggestion, uh, point of order. I'm sorry, Madam Mayor, I made a suggestion before that if we can break up, it is already nine o'clock, uh, and we want to really go over this budget because it is very important for the residents that we break it up like we have done in the past into sections, meaning cover one through five now and then five through 10 in another um, workshop. That's where we get everything done. Can't we just proceed with the meeting and see? See how far we get. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, and then make sure and make sure we complete a section so we don't stop in the middle of a section. That would be yeah. awkward. Uh, I'll let the, uh, Mr. Weekend John to, to, you know, follow the, the order and, uh, Decide if you're going to combine and uh, sections. Uh, my recommendation is I can go through the revenue side and the big picture finance perspective. Second thing would be to have Chief Cabrera give his presentation. Uh, and a few small items I can talk about uh, uh, that should be enough for tonight. That'll set 95% of your budget in motion. Uh, then at our second, or you can add another workshop at our second workshop, we can, we're going to bring back the revisions and a lot of things. If you just, and Commissioner Kennedy and a few others have already sent them to me, there's always a lot of housekeeping. So if, if that's okay, I think you'll be able to get really good facts and information and direction to staff uh, that will be clear and the, the format will come back to you accurate if we bite it off in that order. Okay. So I'm understanding our uh, this evening for the workshop. Do you, are, is it appropriate for us to be chiming in on each department and say, "Here's a change that I would like to see, and this is something I'd like to cut, something I'd like to add." I mean, that's what we're doing here, right? So yep. uh, I'm. I thought that was the case. Is that the case? That's that's my yeah. understanding. Uh, I'll yeah. give revenue. And I must have misunderstood what you said. Yeah, I'll, I'll go through a few of the paid the the sections. Uh, that that are relating to the finance director's job and then I really want you to to get the police department behind you and and get that digested because you're gonna want to talk about you know his ideas where, where chief's departments going because that that is the largest department uh, and a, and then the other departments if we don't get to them tonight they're easier and you can send us direction between now and so that the version you get for your next workshop is sort of a step further. The, the reason I'm saying all this, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of give a, 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 the, the point of it, is a normal budget would start with a philosophical direction from your CEO, your manager. You didn't have a manager, you didn't get that. Step two is for that to come into a draft budget, go back to each department head. Each department head applies that big picture philosophy to the whatever change you know, with whatever's wanted that year, the desire, the budget message, we call it. And then it comes to the commission. So you're, you're stepping in at the first draft level without staff and without a CEO direction. So kind of have to do it all on the fly. So if, if anyone doesn't well, mind, think... let me give the revenue part and go. So what are we doing about public comment? I didn't hear a decision about that. Are we going to do public comment every step along the way? Yeah, 
each Sounds section good. of the budget would be okay. a good time to say time out, any comment, and then move on. Okay. Um, that sounds very cumbersome to me, but yeah. that's just my opinion. It sounds like we'll be stopping and starting a lot. True. Okay. I mean, uh, so we're going to do section one of the budget summary and charts. Yeah. Paul? Yeah. I'll go. I'll go through revenue. And I will stop and begin bringing in the department head and direction. Uh, you know, get, they'll give their overview uh, at each section, and in between those is a good segue for public comment. Obviously, commissioner input would be before that. So, if that's okay. all right, yeah. Uh, do do we want to do a screen share? I think that's the best way. I'll I'll share my screen. Do you have? That's not it. Yep, there you go. Yeah. Oh, it's, you guys can see it, but I can't. Uh, let me get my screen corrected. <laughs> Just a second. I, I don't see it. You don't see it, Vice Mayor? No. Could say mm -hmm. section two. Two revenues. Don't you see that? Revenue. Are you on the phone? No, I'm on my computer. There it is. It just popped up. Got it. Okay, it's a little slow. So basically the front page of your budget, I'm going to blow through these because they're just obviously visual at this point. Uh, this is where it gets fun. Yeah, it becomes a little... Yeah, it, you just have to, I have to go slow and it, I just have to be patient because it, it doesn't react to my keyboard. Yeah. as quickly as it does to the picture, but I see the picture. Okay, so I'm gonna go to section one, the budget summary and charts, which looks like this. Uh, this is your general fund summary. It is basically an overview of, of the, the meat and potatoes of the budget. Basically, all your revenue lines are consolidated into a, a dozen items and your expenditure lines are by department. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about this page at this point. Uh, I'm going to move down to, which I got to go slower. So we were just there. Uh, I'll, I'll learn how to drive before this is over. Uh, charts give you the, a visual reference. Uh, these will be less meaningful uh, until we have a final budget, but they, we try to keep them up. So that you, those who like to see the visual, but I'm not going to spend time on those today. So this brings me to the finance director's favorite page which is revenue. Uh, I don't know how good your eyesight is or how far this is for view. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, I, I can't. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Someone has music on in the background or something. I'm, I'm hearing music. There we go, I, that's better, thank you. I, uh, I, I, if I zoom this anymore, I lose the page. So yeah. I'm gonna leave it right there. If you can see my cursor basically, what we just set was the 9.7 millage rate. That is the top line on here, the ad valorem. Uh, historically, uh, that tracked uh, between 7 and 11% increase the last five or six years. Uh, this year, we're showing this as a 13% increase, and there, there's a little bit of a caveat there. We are taking the full revenue. Historically, I produced the first line with a 95% revenue, which is uh, standard in terms of conservative budgeting. Uh, because we, when you know you're going to have uh, significant revenue alterations over prior year, you, you, you want to start with 100%. And as we get to the final budget, we can choose how to present this. But for today and for the good math purposes, uh, we're taking this because the, the millage rate increase uh, was only, uh, it was the 7.9% uh, of an increase. The reason it's showing 13% is in essence that 5% change. So you're Revenue, again, shows a growth, good thing. $287,000 in the last few years, you've had about that same amount of increase. Uh, and that is the largest line in your budget, is also the most consistent line in your budget. And that, that is a very important concept in, the, in terms of putting in new projects, putting in new expenses. There's, there's a, 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 an important principle called recurring revenue, recurring expense. Uh, a salary, a new position, somebody you don't want to fire three week, three years from now because you don't have revenue, 
you, you don't add positions unless you are confident you're going to be adding uh, recurring revenue. Uh, because of your limited revenue sources, that would be very, very poor strategy on your part, and, and that will not be recommended or part of this budget. Uh, should you choose to, you can, obviously, but but the principle, I wanted to put it out there early and often, that uh, recurring revenue must be connected to uh, recurring expenses and not, and not different. So if you had a project, you wanted to plant some trees, you could use reserve money, you could use one-time money for that, because there's a small maintenance change to that, but but it's not going to happen every year. But a new position, a new manager, for instance, uh, you, you have to have that money uh, and be able to point to it. So the rest of the line items are, are pretty quick uh, because they are, are utility taxes and revenue sharing. And the important part I want to talk to you about are these red negatives that are in the proposed uh, budget over last year. Uh, this has to change even from this draft because when we did this, uh, the, the preliminary estimates from the state of Florida were in the 20 to 30 percent uh, shortages. We just got them uh, for this month and they're looking closer to 50 percent. So if you add these red lines up, uh, they're, a, they're a little over $120,000 in revenue right here that you're not going to get most likely. And if they're another 20 percent, they're basically twice that. So this basic surplus of 158,000 at the bottom is likely to be more likely as zero. Uh, so you can see why at the beginning I knew this, and, you know, to a degree, and said we're starting with 100 percent because there's no point in in starting with a negative budget because in, in the state of Florida you have to have a balanced budget. So that's the unfortunately not so pleasant news, but I think we all knew uh, revenue was, from the various funds that we share in all the different taxes. I don't need to go into them today, uh, but the ones that we don't have control over that come from the state that do hit our lines, particularly the half cent one, which is $205,000, you, you're gonna be looking, I took 20% loss on that, it looks like a 50% loss, that's $100,000 out of your budget right there in one line item. So that's real and material. So the basic premise of your budget is that should you choose uh, any type of reduction, uh, you're already getting a reduction uh, and you're getting it on the revenue side. The next line, I got to switch back. I learned this the hard way that if I don't go back to the normal size, I lose control of the table. Oh, okay. So the, uh, the next pages are what we call the schedules or the, the narrative breakouts of each of the line items. I'm not going to spend any time on this tonight. Uh, but I just want this gives you some details. The reason I'm skipping over the permits and the building type incomes is that's a, that's a different conversation than setting a budget, but it generally matches the, the expense. So they scale with each other. So anytime you have an increase in building activity and costs, you have a, the equal or better than equal revenue. So it's really not something we have to dig into tonight. Uh, we can certainly take that up at another time. And that, like I said, is, is a project all on its own. Uh, the next part of the budget is to start going through departments, the expenses of the budget. Uh, basically, I mentioned I, I wanted to get to the, the police budget first, and, and then that'll get into how you're going to target your money, how you've done it traditionally and historically, and what the chief wants to talk about. And he's prepared, I believe, to, to do that tonight. Uh, so the commission obviously is, is a fairly small detailed budget that you all you know pick uh, for obvious reasons uh, I don't want to spend any time on this tonight because again it's it's a fairly easy lift uh, and I want you to, to get through the meat of the matter so that our draft budgets come back uh, with the most amount of work already done so that the least amount of work uh, is in the decision-making process which is up to you administration uh, I don't want to spend too much time on again because when you, your new manager, interim manager is uh, a few hours into the job and I don't think uh, that any time was spent on this uh, for any of us. Uh, the only change in this budget uh, that we'll, we can talk about at a later time is Dave Hernandez did want to upgrade the uh, a part-time position for a administrative assistant to uh, improve the workload around uh, Village Hall. Uh, 
This I would describe as a placeholder cost. There's no person behind this change. Uh, it's totally flexible, and the uh, the commission would you know can direct through through the guy the the input from the manager on how you want to handle this. My my finance hat says you have a uh, an unresolved liability is how we put it in our terms, which is you don't have a full time manager. You do not know what that costs. So anything in this line item. Uh, in all line items may be subject to a revision to accommodate an, a salary negotiation. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying that that's how a f how you put your finance hat on and say be cautious uh, because you're going to have to re-rack potentially some of these salaries and that new manager may want to reorganize and may want to shift people. So uh, I'm going to move past this one and go to the, pol the police chief Cabrera and oh. Well, have him talk and then I can answer any questions, of course. Well, it, Actually, I was going to cover debt. I was going to cover debt too. Well, under my report. Yeah, go ahead. Um, there's only one little thing on the administration that we should uh, go over right now because it's simple. It's on the information technology, the, uh, the Loxia technologies from the police. It's on the administration, should be moved to the police. Okay. All right. That, you can send me any little corrections like that. Again, this okay. is the first draft. It, it has not been scrubbed. Um, so now I got to find my page. Yeah. When I, when I go to share screen, I lose the, uh, I know it says the, the thumbnail doesn't obey your command. Yep. Yeah. And it, uh, it doesn't let me pick one page at a time either. So two mm -hmm. seconds, I'll find what I want. Here we go. The, the last piece of finance uh, overview of tonight is the fact that you still do have a, a loan uh, that, that was used for the, the Village Hall expansion, I believe, and some other uh, construction projects. That loan was renegotiated uh, to remove a very onerous uh, reserve requirement equal to the capital, which is absurd. Uh, it's a 4.5% loan. Uh, with your FEMA money and with your reserves, you, would, you may want to consider uh, re, uh, taking this loan out and keeping the line of credit available for other future things like another hurricane, et cetera. Uh, four and a half percent, the remainder of life on the, on the loan is about $63,000 in interest. Uh, just stick that in the back, uh, you know, of your, of your head for a little while. And as we go through this, if you, if at a future time, if the commission feels, uh, that that is, something they want to do as your finance director i'm just suggesting that we consider that uh, and that brings me to the conclusion of the introduction and overview of revenue and the finance lines of significance uh, and i would go i would recommend we go to the police department and begin uh, that portion and i can unshare my screen okay i think first we have to call for public comments on what I think so. Yep. Um, on the first, uh, well, you covered the debt services too, but on the first five sections. Yes. yes. Uh, is there any public comments on the first five sections? We have. We didn't do five. Excuse me. We didn't do five. We just we didn't did. Do five. We just we did revenue and debt. That's all we did. Is two. Right. right. We yeah, I'm tabling. I'm recommending that we table full discussion on exactly. commission and administration right. at this time. Yes. Yeah, because he mm -hmm. wanted to jump to that. Uh, I can't see the screen if there's anybody that wants to pu do public comments. I don't see either anybody raising their hand. Can you see that? You can see the people. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, it took me a minute to find the button. Okay. <laughs> I have, uh, I have uh, Janie Anderson. I have a question first though, Jenny, what are we allowed to comment on at this point? Because I may be out of place. No, how about the first five sections? No, so we haven't done five sections. No, we, we did not two. discuss the first five sections. We only discussed revenue and debt service. Paul That's mentioned it. the other ones and said we're going to table them okay, and do so them no, at a future I don't have, meeting. Okay, in which people. case, no, I don't have, my, my questions don't come in until you get to administration. Okay. We did okay, it. so I'll, I'll mute myself again. All right. <laughs> okay. Any other comments? Then we'll go to section six. 
police department. I think well, is this a point? At, is this a point at which the uh, commission would make comment on, on either of those sections? Um, Mayor, uh, point of order. Uh, Mr. Herring, um, I believe the, our attorney doesn't uh, have to stay for the whole entire workshop, and uh, we may want him to <laughs> go have. No, it's procedural. Go ahead. Yeah. It, 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 you know, um, if you are, um, don't need my presence, you can excuse me and uh, I will drop off of the call. I'm just it's up to the commission to decide. If it's no, I, I, I'm specifically addressing that comment to the commission. Okay, I think that would be fine. Attorney, do you think you need to be here? Uh, no, I, I, you know, unless the, that portion, uh, or relatively, uh, I guess I would refer to my portion of the, um, of the budget comes up for discussion, then, uh, just someone either text me or email me and I'll jump back on. We'll tell you how much, we'll tell you how um, much we cut. I, okay. If we're going to, Paul, you have the intention to discuss the police budget tonight, right? Yeah. I want to get that tonight. Okay. And I and I understand why. Uh, if there's going to be a conversation like you and I discussed on Saturday about possibly combining departments, is that something we might need the attorney here to weigh in on? There. Or is that something that falls outside of his wheelhouse? This is all draft pre I'm asking. I'm not suggesting. Uh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure we may not need him for that. <laughs> As I said, if if, if we're if, if for whatever reason you do need me, I'm simply a text message away. Thank you. Mr. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. Does the commission want to make any comments? Uh, 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 Have a good evening. It's if it's possible, we can hear from the chief first, and then we can make. That's who I was going to call. Okay. Thank you. Well, okay, but guys, <laughs> we're we're doing a, a one section at a time. Paul specifically discussed revenue and debt service, and then he stopped. And we took public comment. So if we're going to comment, we need to comment on those two sections first, and then the police. Then we can move on to the police department, unless I'm misunderstanding how this works. No public comments, Vice Mayor. I understand that. So no, that would comment. be the time that the commission makes comments. No, we need commission yeah, comments no, next no, no. on those yes. two sections, and then we move on. No, Commissioner Kenny, you're right. You can make a comment. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I'll, I'll defer to, I, I have some things I want to say, but I'll let somebody else go first. I just, it's a procedural thing that we need to wrap this section up before we jump into the police. Any other com commissioners want to speak? Um, if I may, just have a couple of comments on the revenues and I had a very productive exchange with Paul and, and Sharon. So uh, they answered a lot of my questions already. Um, on the revenue side, uh, I wondered, and I'm not sure I got the answer to this, was the police charges, police service charges for off-duty income. We show, It's shown on page 14 of the revenues, 14 out of 19. And so you have year, it lists year to date, some 20, almost $25,000, but nothing in the proposed budget. And I'm wondering if it's captured somewhere else. Did I miss it? I don't know. But I know it balances out. This is not village revenue necessarily. We collect the money for the off-duty officers and pay it out. Um, but I just want to make sure it's accounted for. Uh, yeah, I believe uh, Sharon uh, went through that a little bit in her reply. Uh, Sharon, if you could unmute and clarify for her. and verify that fact. Uh, yeah, when the money comes in, it goes into um, Police service charge and the revenues, which on the revenues is combined with, I believe, miscellaneous income. And then when they are paid, I pay it out of other pays, so it's separated out. So you see the coming in and you see the going out. Right. Okay. And so so where um, it's showing the money, it's showing the current year year to date. It's showing it under line three four nine, but you're saying. In the new budget, it's a different line item. No, well, we don't budget for it in the new budget. I don't budget for it coming in, and I don't budget for it going out. So it, there's no effect. Okay. Okay, got it. Um, and then the, kind of the same thing goes on with uh, page 19 out of 19, where 
the fine forfeiture special program. <clears throat> Anticipated revenues of 30, and I know I saw on the expense side a related or corresponding out. But for in my mind, since this is a program that uh, was planned, is not didn't occur because of different reasons, and it may be planned for the future. I wonder if we should be counting on that revenue when it's not even up and running yet. I, I could see capturing the expense side. You want to have the line item to say. This is a, something that the chief, I'm sure, will talk about some more. But I'm not sure that we should, you know, kind of book anticipated revenue for it yet. Uh, I Are agree. Are you talking about fines and forfeitures, Rox? Yes. Yeah, the background okay, real quick. What, that yeah. was related to the uh, to a external task force that had an expense on our side in order to sponsor an officer to participate and had a revenue uh, should they close a case that has revenue. Uh, I agree uh, with Rox that we could drop that and bring it in each time that there's a programmatic reason to do it unless Chief thinks otherwise. Like if he knows he's got one every year, then you leave it in. If it's a one time in and out, then you just you, you do it as a proposal programmatically. Paul, uh, if, if anyone can hear me. Go ahead, Nick. Yep. We were actually going to address that in the upcoming budget, that specific line item. Uh, if you I thought want. so. Okay. Anything else? Um, I, that's about it. On the debt service, Paul, I think that's a really good idea. Um, and we should talk about it some more. Okay. I'll, I pulled the payoff and I'll, I'll put that together for decisional. Because that requires an ordinance, I believe, if I recall, because it was created by an ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Can I so, I'll, I'll talk to John about it, but I'll, I'll get that. We'll get that served up for you. Great. Thank you. Commissioner Tuda. Yeah, yeah. Just real quick. Just, um, I don't have any questions on any of the items in the revenue uh, area right now, but just for clarifying purposes, the next draft of the budget, um, we're going to see, uh, those changes in those, some of those revenue categories, uh, yeah. because now that we have a clearer picture, um, would, would it be at this point where we may see, or is it, you know, I know we talked about it briefly. Um, would it be at this point where we see the different ad valorem revenues coming in at the different millage rates? Or are you going to, uh, is that going to be in a separate uh, schedule that we can look at when we look at the budget? Uh, that, that we can do separately. Okay. Yeah. I just yeah. like to be able to take a look at that and see if, you know, what we're looking at ad valorem revenue going personally for me, going back to that rollback rate, just so that we can actually see, you know, what we're looking at there. I'll, I'll have that for you. That's pretty easy. I'll get that for you. Okay. Thanks. Any other comments? Okay. Chief. Cabrera. Yeah, I, I have a couple of things. No, I have a couple of things. Jenny. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so can you hear me? Jenny, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, to what, to Will's point, um, I, 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 I want to make sure I understand what Will said because uh, I, I like what I heard. Uh, uh, Paul, did you suggest that you're going to create a new cover sheet for each of the different millage options? That It'll would be, start with the top number being different and break down? Um, I can do a summary page like that, if you don't mind, because these okay. are tied formulas. It's better to just pull the big top number I understand. I understand. on the side and just say, look, this is you a sample. Do, and yeah. I understand. If you don't ask that it be exact. You would have to do five different 196 page documents. I understand. Yeah, if you could just do a summary, that would be great. It's not something that's sort of in my- um, Yeah, if I'm you remember that, do, that top another page. But another commissioner brought it up. I think we should look at it. You remember that top page, which just has a, a consolidated revenue and a consolidated uh, department uh -huh. summary? Yeah. That's sort of yeah. where you do your sampling yeah. practice runs. Okay. That That's format. what I'm talking about. Okay, great. A couple of other things. I just want to make sure I understand and reinforce that these variances that we're seeing on the cover page, on the summary page, these variances that we're looking at, pluses and minuses, those are based on the proposed budget that we're looking at tonight uh, against the current fiscal year, fiscal 20. It's comparing the proposed budget versus the adopted fiscal 20 budget not where you're projecting that we're going to come in. So I just want to make sure everyone's clear on that because some of those differences are really uh, taking, are because things didn't happen this year. Right. So it's a very important thing to, I think for all of us to consider, it's not 
proposed versus where we're where we are year to date or where Paul projects we will be by the end of the fiscal year it's against the adopted budget and those are two very different things and to that point I wonder if you projected a 20% shortfall because of COVID for many of these things considering that some of that is eaten up by the difference between projected and adopted I wonder if we might consider a, being more conservative and increasing uh, higher than 20 to 25, 30, I don't know, but I'm wondering if we might consider that right. to be more conservative as we look at these things, because we're not, this looks like we're comparing against this current year. We're not really, we're comparing against what was adopted for this right. current year, not what really is going to happen. And, in, and throughout this budget, you're going to see numbers that are widely fluctuate because we budgeted for things that didn't happen. <laughs> right. Uh, in a, a $2.5 million budget, uh, $120,000 discussion is, you know, we, we asterisk it, we put it in our minds, uh, but the big, you know, the, the big expenditure are re based on revenue is at war. So those miscellaneous lines, at, like projections being on or off, they're not as, they don't need as much time in analysis at this stage, but we will do that. We will, we will go through and, and Sharon and I will go through with, with these latest projections and we'll keep tightening it up. And before your final budget, it'll be the okay. best answer we can give you. Okay. Commissioner Chudy. Okay, because I see. What? Are you finished Commissioner Kennedy? No, I thought you asked Will. I thought you called on Will to say something. Oh, yeah, no, no, I had finished it. Uh, Commissioner Kennedy's, uh, Vice Mayor Kennedy's turn. He was uh, in the middle of something. I was done. Okay, I thought Jenny. Okay. Um, what else did I want to ask here? Um, mm -hmm. Under the debt service, I've had a conversation with Paul, and I agree we should just pay that loan off. Um, it, we're, we can save sixty-four thousand dollars if we pay that loan off. So since we're having that conversation now, I'm certainly all for that. And that's all I want to say about those those sections. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Commissioner Kennedy, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We can then go to your chief Cabrera. It's his show. He's the man. I'm sorry. It's his show. He's the man. Yeah, Chief Cabrera, you're, you're okay. There you are. Okay. Good evening, everybody. At this time, um, I'm going to turn over a presentation to uh, Commander Walsh. All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, first and foremost, like uh, Paul has already mentioned, you know, this is the footstep going forward. You know, this is the basis from where we jump off. And with that, I just want to thank extremely Sharon and Paul for taking mine and the Chief's phone calls when you guys are on vacation, everything helping us, you know, outline this and really give us a good foothold. Um, a couple days ago, maybe end of last week, Paul had reached out to me and the chief and, you know, asked us just brief synopsis, hit some highlights, you know, last year, upcoming year. And one of the things I noticed is that a lot of the achievements of last year in the budgetary sense is going to also translate into the current passage of the budget and going forward. One of the main things was the immediate response to the COVID pandemic. No one anticipated that when we passed the last budget, but due to the rapid response, the great leadership that we had from the incident commander, from the interim manager at the time, really got a hold of it as things were just brewing in the air. You know, whether it was creating the specific line item that we knew that we're going to need to trace back to FEMA. It was just an all thought out process as we're going forward. We really don't know when this is going to end as of right now. So that's something that we need to take into account as we're planning for the future. Uh, another one of the areas that was very significant for us was at the end of this last year, when we turned in the uniform crime report, we had one of the lowest crime rates that I've seen since I've been here. And we were within the top three or four county or cities within Dade County. That's landing us amongst Golden Beach and Indian Creek as far as crime rates. So I think that that, that in itself speaks for itself. Again, you know, the plan of action that the chief had when he came in, whether it was splitting up the city into different zones, the way he was restructuring with different 
areas of supervision and coverage, you know, it's really paid off for itself. And I think that you're really seeing that translate going forward into, you know, the overall cost. And by that, what I'm talking about as well is the overtime pay. I've been with Biscayne Park for, you know, nearly a decade. And I, I can tell you from what I've seen, current sitting commissioners, past commissioners, there probably wasn't a time when the budget passed that you weren't seeing 70, 80, $90,000 in overtime, pushing that limit, getting close to it, if not surpassing it. One of the major things that the chief did when he came in was said, you know, listen, I think that I can get a handle on this. I'm willing to cut the overtime budget in half. A lot of the people that were around, you know, hey, that's a great goal. I hope that you meet it. But, you know, based on past experiences, we're really not sure about how that goes, but, you know, go forth. Um, I, can, I can remember sitting down with the chief, with Paul, and, you know, talking about reorganizing everything, splitting, you know, a full-time position into part-time positions, how restructuring in that sense would lower the overtime rate. And you're really seeing that come into fruition again, on top of Chief Cabrera's, you know, mentality and thought process on that, I have to give extreme credit to Commander Roman. She does an absolutely phenomenal job making sure everybody is on point, on schedule, filling in whatever gaps that we need. So, you know, this team does not function without any one of these cons. So I'm very appreciative of that. Um, something else that we've noticed, you know, with current environment going on, and, you know, as when the chief came in and going forward, our training budget, you know, that was something that was something that was very important to us, something that we realized needed to be enhanced because it really left a lot of areas that were neglected and we severely moved forward in that. So, you know, I'm appreciative in that. But that that's the highlights kind of the overcap as far as that goes. I can jump into the specialized program now if that was appropriate or if you want me to wait off on that. You can do that. Okay. As far as in the line item, it is at the very bottom of page two of 20, 12.00 full-time salaries, and it is the last item, police officer special program, 24000 Okay. Page two of twenty. Page two of Yeah, I just I just want to give everybody a chance to catch up if we're good. And again, as you know, Commissioner Ross had spoken about earlier, you know, and Paul had commented on, you know, this was a very specific program. The chief and I outlined this at the last budget, you know, workshops and passage of it. This was a money laundering task force, which was fully operational. We had the prime candidate picked out for it, previously serving in such task force. He was originally slated to begin in March. And unfortunately, with the way that things developed, February, you know, COVID really took hold of us. It put the program on hold. And we weren't able to submit the officer. We weren't able to obviously garner any funds from it because if we didn't submit the officer, we could not recuperate anything from it because we didn't participate. But one of the major things that we wanted to note in that was that we didn't just waste that money. We didn't just, okay, that's $24,000 not spent, you know, spend it on something else. Again, that was something that the chief brought to the table. You know, I was firmly behind him with it. Commander Roman was behind him, the manager, that this task force was a specific purpose. And to, to use that money for something else kind of seemed off to everybody, you know, that, w that wasn't really a route that we were ready to go. Having said that, because it is a placeholder in the current budget going forward, we've kind of kicked around ideas and we're, we're currently beginning several different options. I'm sure everybody's spoken about it with moving the code department into the police department, overseeing that. We're currently beginning the civil citation process that you guys signed off on a few meetings ago. And so what we were looking at doing is as opposed to, you know, just outlining this money for this task force officer, when we're not really sure when that task force is going to come back, 
we were going to divide that salary. So we were going to create another part-time position to help out within the village. Again, supplementing the officers that are on, keeping in check that overtime budget, keeping in check, you know, the other salaries. And then an additional part of that, that we were going to draw from that is the creation of a supervisor. One of the current road officers would get promoted to a corporal's position. This would, this would give us several opportunities. Number one is it gives us additional supervision, which is always good in any area of police work. Number two is that they would oversee the civil citation process, which is gonna be, from what I've been explained to it, it's not overall difficult, but it's just time consuming. And this is an area to where the village stands to receive an income and we don't wanna have anything fall through the cracks. They would also take under their wing the supervision of the code enforcement department. Um, I can Nick, uh, just a question. Uh, I, I think you said this, but I just want you to reemphasize it. Th those two roles do go hand in hand: the civil citation and the code enforcement. They're actually very similar. They're close cousins, if you will. They are. There are some civil citations. Uh, which were like decriminalized that would not fall under code enforcement. So it is kind of a twofold branch, but yes, you are correct that some of the civil citations would fall under code as well. That's really just uh, people not wearing masks outside. Is oh. the, no, the new rules. that would no. be now. <laughs> the, no, the, the civil citations, uh, the, the mutual aid agreement or memorandum of understanding that was signed by the commission three months ago, maybe it, it came with a outline of about a hundred statutes or uh, ordinances, excuse me, uh, ranging from possession of marijuana, unmarked commercial vehicles, things that were once arrestable, the county decided were taking up, be it jail space, court time, it was easier, it was a revenue stream for the county and they just moved it along to where you don't need to damage somebody's entire life for a minor infraction whereas a civil penalty would ultimately serve your goal you don't need to give that person a permanent criminal record but there is there is something that uh, Carlos Jimenez just did with a hundred dollar fine and I forget how much we get of that money yeah, uh, I think what you're speaking, talking about mayor is that uh, because um, I, I I've been up to, up to date with these uh, emergency incident command meetings. The mayor was referring to uh, the orders that were passed by the county with restaurants, with people not wearing masks, and other other related items uh, to this COVID nineteen pandemic. So basically, um, I've had several discussions. You know, and, and that's exactly the way I, I want to do it is what other cities are beginning to do, which is they're, they're implementing it in increments. So one of the tools that we have to now that, that this passes, um, each, uh, we can cite, provide a civil, we can uh, issue a civil citation for not wearing a mask and that's a hundred dollar fine. Most of these civil citations that the county has implemented, which are anywhere from 100 to 150 are, 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 are about $100 or more. So the ones with the mass violations are, are $100. That's $100, yeah. That's, and how that's much what, do get back? The exact amount of that, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I, I, can look I don't know that. if it's 50, 50 or 25, I'm not sure. No, um, it, okay. Go ahead, go ahead, Commander. No, I, I'm not sure I, I can look into that. Yeah, no, no it's the, the revenues all depends on when it's challenged. If it's challenged, if it's not challenged, uh, we get uh, the majority, the majority of, the, of, of those funds. Uh, you want to go over the, the vehicle? I can, yes. Um, let me see. That would be... Page 13 of 20, line item 
Am I the only one not hearing anything? I'm hearing it too. I was waiting for everybody to get on the same page. I okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thought I had an audio problem. We good to go or? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, command. Okay. Yeah. All right. So on on this page, the this is all rentals and leases, copier, water, radio leases, vehicle leases. The top two vehicles, the 2015 Ford Tauruses, those will come out of lease in September. So this is going to be one of those areas. Uh, Paul, Paul, the chief, and the former manager, the former interim manager, we we have spoken about this as far as those cars are already allotted. We were planning on paying for them, rolling that over into new vehicles. Those vehicles, we're really trending towards looking towards SUV. We did we do a lot of discussion with Enterprise, as most of you know, or all know, is our fleet program managers. As you may or may not know, the Ford Tauruses, which are the vehicle, the primary vehicles that you see, the sedans that we have, are going out of production. They're not making those anymore. So what you're seeing a lot of is the SUVs. The hybrids that they have, the Ford Explorers, the Chevy Tahoes. And one of the main reasons why we see it here is because of is because of the water retention that you have. You know, you, you're aware of some of the areas of water that we have, standing water. Those of you that have been around for Hurricane Irma know what we experienced during that. And the Current SUVs are putting out better fuel efficiency than you know older model vehicles of sedans. So it's really one of those things that even if in the back of your mind you start to think, oh, okay, I don't think an SUV is going to be quite economical or environmentally friendly, realize that as we go forward every year, they're trending to get better and better fuel efficiency and ultimately eco-friendly. Everyone realizes that that is the wave of the future. So the current budget, one of the part of the monies that we're, we're going to be asking for is one, one additional vehicle. Correct. Yeah. On, on these leases are attached to the former budget. Going forward into the current budget, we are going to be asking for one additional vehicle. Okay. So you will in draft two, we'll have this updated. It'll show your proposed vehicle a lot bit, basically. Yeah. Again, this is something that. Uh, GMS and you know the staff discussed that this was again a very first foothold place marker we needed to jump off from somewhere we will scrub this we will get it back together and present it at a you know a more up-to-date commander you want to touch up briefly on so now these are discussions we had with the with Paul um, on uh, the code enforcement aspect and then I, I just want to show the say something really quick with the civil citation program part of the fact that uh i'm looking at promoting one a corporal which is going to cost us 90 cents an hour more which is a total of a thousand dollars a thousand eighty five dollars for the whole year is not only for uh for supervisory they say you know that one of the ways to prevent corruption is to have appropriate supervision so in uh but that's one issue but also to oversee the civil citation program to uh, assist us with the management of code enforcement. Um, there's numerous changes that I'm looking to uh, to go ahead and uh, enact immediately, uh, which is for accountability. Uh, you know, part of it will be seven days a week code enforcement services, um, unif uh, uniforms and uniformity, and the fact that we want them to log in. So we're going to be uh, the police department will be uh, overseeing and will have oversight of the code enforcement department. I've already had discussions with the chairman and and some of some of the people that have reached out to me that, uh, on the board. Um, I look at the fact that you know it, it's critical that there's that we make that there's issues that are corrected immediately and, and there's a, an immediate impact, positive impact. So. We're working towards towards those goals, so that th those things will be reflected in the budget. Um, I spoke to 
I, I've spoken to Paul. I'm looking at, you know, splitting it where, where we have a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday schedule, and then the other, other code enforcement officer will work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And on Wednesday, they overlap, they get to talk, and that's where they plan and coordinate and prepare for the code enforcement meetings. So, you know, there, there's different ideas. Um, we're gonna be reaching out to other municipalities to inquire what policies and procedures they have in place for better management of the, of the code departments. So uh, the, the police department, you know, it's important that we have that additional supervision and personnel to properly uh, be able to, to administer that department and the civil citation program. As you all know, uh, Commander Roman, um, we've automated basically uh, all the records since 2018, we began 2017, 2018, we began to automate. And so if you come into this and you ask for worksheets, we, you don't have to, we don't have to go through a box. We, you know, we have them scanned and they're already automated into just like the tickets and everything else. So, you know, that is part of effectiveness and efficiency. And that's our optimum goal besides superior service delivery. Commander. Can I, can I call a quick, quick timeout? Yes, sir. Uh, just, just for the commission. Uh, obviously, uh, the manager can assign responsibilities as uh, she sees fit. Uh, but from a budgeting standpoint, I'm not. I, I, I think you bring code enforcement into the police budget as it, but keep it separate so that we have the historical. Correct. So we can, so we can track. But if you don't object, I can make that transition for draft number two so that those two budget line items are, are essentially numbered like they are now, but they're right next to each other. And, and should there be any uh, crosswalking or, or borrowing from one skill or pay set to another, I don't think there is, but there might be, uh, we can, we can adjust the draft budget to look like that. If, if no one objects, that's what I would, I would recommend that we do. I have no objection. I have no objection. It's really formatic. Yeah, that's why. The, she, and, and the last thing I had to say is I don't know how much longer she's going to be able to stay with us tonight because of a, her personal family obligations and, and her mental well-being. She deserves the night off. Uh, Sharon is with us tonight. She spoke up a couple times. Uh, Nick, Nick mentioned how helpful she is. Uh, you guys don't know how helpful she is. Uh, it, those of you, uh, that's times every department, every person. Uh, Sharon, really appreciate all you do. And if you're with us any longer, we appreciate it. But if you have to go, it's okay. I understand. But thank you for giving us the time tonight. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. My timeout's over. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Uh, I mean, the, the chief touched on a lot of it. You know, one of the major aspects is with the two code enforcement officers splitting them up in that seven days a week coverage. I can only tell you how many times I'm sure the chief has received the phone calls. I received the phone calls. Anybody has people doing work on Sundays, Saturday, you know, code enforcement's not around. So that, that'll really help to cut down some of those phone calls, hopefully, and just give a broader view of everything going on in the village on a daily basis. Um, I mean, you nailed most of that as far as code enforcement, Chief. Uh, I can I can answer uh, any direct questions if anybody no, wants. Yeah, Madam Mayor, uh, point of order. I want to ask, uh, okay. does the point of order, uh, is that the new code person is going to be under the police department, right? Because this is, if I'm understanding that correctly. So you're going to have the two. The whole department oh, is. Yeah, the whole department is, okay. Okay. Okay, Chief. You. Okay. Oh. You can open up to the public and the commissioners. What, whatever. Okay. Public comments on the police department. Uh, Jenny, I have a question. Before I have a question before you allow people start speaking, just to make sure we're being organized here. This was the the department. The section that we're discussing now is police but it morphed into a code conversation because of the idea to bring code under police. Yes. So are we going to be discussing police and code together now at the same time for public comment and for commissioners? No, I, I brought it in. Because they're not together the, on the agenda. 
Right, right. I brought it in, uh, uh, Vice Mayor, because of uh, the purpose of transparency and, and in order mm -hmm. to kind of begin to set the stage that um, the commission mm -hmm. is aware of the vision of our goals and objectives. Um, but we're here, and you're 100% you're correct. We're here to discuss police. Okay. We, I just touched on it, uh, so everybody's kind of on the same page. So you did okay, I understand that. I appreciate that. I want to make sure the public is aware that they can comment on both if that's what we're doing. Yeah, I think it would be more efficient if we combine them both. So it could be the police department. Do we need to present code first as, a, as an apartment then? Or well, could we'll we kind of just do that one of them. casually? They can speak on both or either. Any public okay. comments on the police department or the code compliance? I have... Um, Janie Anderson. Got it. Janie Anderson, 11th place and 119th Street. Chief, you have made my evening. And an evening that started out <laughs> badly to hear that you're taking over the code department supervision, to hear your plans for the department. I mean, we have, we've never had this kind of commitment to code, but certainly the last two years have been a complete and total disaster. And we've fallen so far behind. I have so much more confidence now in hearing the way you're laying things out, particularly in accountability, scheduling. But I only have one question because I noticed that there was a $3,000 cut in the code supervisor's salary. And that's a concern because, again, we are so far behind. The bottom looks like up. And I think 41 just, you know, I believe that's what it was. I, don't, I didn't pull that up in front of me yet but somewhere around 41, and that just seems like not the place we want to cut a salary because we're going to be making much more stringent demands of this person. Um, you're talking about cuts Stop on the code officer, Jane? I'm sorry? You got, you're talking about the cut The code the supervisor salary. Supervisor salary. I apologize. I should have had that in front of me. I'm sorry. It's page two or 15 on the um, code compliance. Oh, Paul, that, that happened because it was that the reduction because of Christina's salary, it was higher? It, it looks, it's about a $3,000 reduction, Chief. Yeah, I, I see it, it's on, the, it's on the worksheet. I don't know exactly why that was handed to us. Yeah, um, well, yeah it, it's important and I agree with uh, Jane. I saw Dan shaking his head, I agree. It's important we properly budget these departments. One of the mm -hmm. things I, I really want to focus is a lot, of, and it happened once, I'm not going to get into the particulars of it, but they arrive at someone's house and they're in jeans and a t-shirt and nobody knows they're code, code enforcement. There's no IDs. So I, I want to make sure they're properly uniformed, that the shirt says code enforcement, that, you know, uh, you know, we got to instill just like we did with the professionalism. You know? um, and the first I, thing people see absolutely I can pull some magic budgeting really fast in front of your eyes the yes, uh, the police budget is actually showing uh forty two hundred dollars under budget proposed i I'm guessing we can balance code and police and fix that pretty easily that's great that was that was without using my hands <laughs> so you are you taking uniforms away from the police department I'll tell you later what you're losing no no, no you <laughs> You're fine. Uh, it, it'll it'll work out. Okay, but Chief. Thank thank you so much, Chief. Any hey. other comments? The police department. Yeah, and the yeah. Police. I see Chuck Ross is trying has his hand up. Uh, first, we have uh, Bobby Anderson. Bob, you're muted. I know. <clears throat> I know. And I'm I'm sitting here tapping away at things. Um, I'm thrilled that the Police department is going to be taking taking over code under this uh, administration, and especially this chief. A little history: years ago, the code department was under the police department, except for back in those times, the different chiefs really were not concerned about code. It was like it was under their department, but they they didn't really manage it at all. I have full confidence that this chief will manage it, manage it that we properly, 
and maybe this will be our first time we will really have a good closing part. Thank you, Chief, for going ahead and taking this off. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Ross, I'm unmuting you. He's muted again. I, I, I'm muted him. Uh, yeah, Mr. I, I had not unmuted myself already, Roseanne. Thank you. Oh, um, Chuck Ross, give my address again, 11166 Griffin Boulevard. Uh, the, uh, I, I agree. I, I think taking over the code department by the police force, especially under this chief, is, is an excellent idea to professionalize it. And I, I just want to say that uh, Whatever this chief wants, we should give him. And one thing we should give him is a higher salary. <laughs> because we don't want to lose this chief. I, I don't know if I can emphasize that enough. Uh, he has done wonders for our police department uh, with his rearranging and uh, as far as uh, creating the part-time positions uh, zoning out, creating zones in the village for patrolling purposes. We've had we have the, uh, the best police presence I can remember ever. I I, I don't know. I, I I could go on all night. So whatever I, I trust him, his judgment completely in his budget, and you should too. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any other. The other person. Okay. A couple of comments to close. I don't see any else. Okay. Shall we go uh, in between and do building services? Well, we have commissioner comments first, Jenny. Oh, okay. Go ahead. With the police. Uh, the police. Would you like me to go first? Go ahead. Vice Mayor. Yes, I heard Roseanne saying something. Yeah, okay. was, uh, I have a couple of things. Go ahead, Roseanne. I was asking the chief or um, commander if they finish with the presentation with the police. No, no, uh, Commissioner, Commissioner, uh, Vice Mayor Kennedy. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, a couple of uh, quick things. First of all, I have been such an advocate for getting the code department under, in, in, uh, not giving it to the chief, but giving it, putting it inside the police department. So I'm really, really happy that it sounds like we're going to be moving forward with that. Uh, for my money, the police department not only is the biggest part of our budget, but it's the most professionally run part of our entire operation. Or it is. And uh, it gives me great confidence that the code department will, as an, another arm of enforcement, will all be under one part of uh, one branch of our village. And I think it's a, a wonderful thing. I have a specific question about that. Uh, I suppose it's to the chief. Will the code department be physically moving inside the police side of the building? Cause I think that's a really interesting uh, idea that all the enforcement departments are all over in the, in the police department and get it out of, uh, village hall and move it over there on the enforcement side. Is that part of the plan? No, sir. At this time, that is not part of the plan. Uh, currently, our focus is going to be more the restructuring of the operational aspects and the administrative aspects. Okay. And uh, honestly, okay. We're, we're not, I'm not, we're not there. Okay, fair enough. Just wanted to, uh, to clarify if it would be all moving under one roof. Um, will there be any, and this Paul may jump in here and answer that we may see some of this in the next draft. Will there be any economy of scale that we recognize when you, I know you're not merging them together, but when you put them side by side, will there be some economy of scale that we'll gain there? I, I was looking at that for that exact question. Uh, that'll happen organically. Uh, and it may not happen this year's budget cycle. You follow okay. me? Because if you, if you try to cram we'll two things- We'll see it in the actual numbers next year. Yeah, okay, I think enough. that's where it'll fall. Um, okay, On the, in the code budget, there's $5,000 for professional services. That's for the magistrate. Are we keeping that in there for some reason? No, that's a change. That was for the magistrate. That, that's gonna come out? 
Yeah, I believe the ordinance uh, eliminated that. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Um, so that that's five thousand dollars we can save right there. Um, although I would uh, suggest, and this is probably in a well, it's not an accounting thing. I would suggest that you might leave that line item in the yes. budget and zero it out and leave it there for future consideration because. Uh, a couple of meetings ago, Will brought up a good point when we passed the new code stuff that we might have that option to fall back on if we ever needed it. We couldn't do it because of kind of a logistics thing. It wasn't that Rox pointed out that the name, word magistrate was not in the name of the uh, ordinance, so we couldn't do it. But we might want to leave that in the budget so we can look at it. The, the, whoever's on the commission next year and the year after that can look at it because it might be a consideration and it might be a, a nice placeholder to leave in there. Um, uh, a couple of things about the police department, but before I leave the code, um, I just want to say that, you know, for 9.7 millage rate that we just passed, it's not official yet, but we approved it tonight, and $131,000 budget, this village is not getting what it needs out of the code department. So that's really how I look at it as a, a resident who lives in this village as well. I drive around this village, and I'm not seeing 9.7 plus $131,000, so I'm hoping a year from now, we're looking at a, the, the commission is looking at a budget with looking at one full year of code inside police and we are driving around this village and we're seeing what we're paying for i'm really looking forward to that under the police budget itself uh overtime nick you talked about the overtime i'm just curious and this goes back to my earlier point about the proposed fiscal 21 is comparing fiscal 20 adopted and not the actual for overtime why are we still budgeting fifty thousand dollars when this year paul is projecting we'll come in at let's just call it 20 and the year prior to that we came in at about 20. so two consecutive years we're spending twenty thousand dollars in overtime but we're still budgeting 50. why are we keeping that in there at that number we go ahead come on i mean at, at the end of the day $50,000 in our budgets for overtime, when you look at the grant scale, uh, as I spoke about a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. is still a very low number. We have absolutely no idea to tell what's coming up ahead of us. Yeah. If we get hit by a hurricane, if we have for some reason, you know, several officers get sick or retire, and we need to fill that I'm immediately, you know, for the attrition yeah. rate to go through a process of hiring people, it really hamstrings you to sit there and go, we're good at okay. 20, and then when you blow that budget, it looks, you know, very bad. Got it. So it just makes you, it just makes you more comfortable to have that buffer built into it, and we don't spend it, we don't spend it. In the unknown environment of police work, yes. Okay, very good. Good answer. And, um, also and then, um, go ahead. No, it's okay. Um, okay, under the police department, um, the other thing I'd like to say is um, you have, tr you have uh, money in here for education and training, and uh, if you've been spending that money the past couple of years, I think it shows in what we're getting out of our police department, so thank you for that, and I'm all about training. Um, and I'm not, you may say, Chief, this isn't the day to talk about it, but I think in light of what's going on in this country in the past couple of months, um, I'd like to, uh, if you haven't already done it, I'd like to know if any of that training money would be spent on any kind of diversity training for your staff, de-escalation training, training on unconscious bias and other things that are now, we're now understanding are much, very important things for the police departments to be trained on. And the answer to that, Commissioner, is we began that, that exact training, I think, Two years ago, Nick, correct me? Yes, correct. Two oh, years we were scheduled to our, for our third training. And just so for transparency and for informational purposes, it's conducted by the by Florida International University. And they come Where in are you? and they provide that training. Additionally, I plan to coordinate this year with other governmental agencies that will provide additional trainings and at no at no cost or very little cost. And this past October, actually, the FBI had come in at the request of Chief Cabrera to speak to the department. So those specific topics have, are, are part of the plan? Yes. 
That's great to know. Okay, that's those are all my questions. Thank you very much. Okay, Commissioner Ross. Yeah, thank you. Um, so let me start with code. And Mac mentioned the special magistrate and the five thousand dollars set aside for that. Um, I think we should leave it in there, but perhaps broaden it to say, uh, you know, doesn't we? Of course, we don't have a magistrate, but we might want to use uh, support services through uh, Calvin Giordano or someone else to do a push on a code issue. Uh, I think that the have $5,000 sitting there and available for support is a good idea. So I would not remove that from the budget. Maybe as continue as a- So Rock, would you leave it where it is or would you, would you put it under another line item? Are you saying mm -hmm. to leave it under magistrate? What the about under contingency? Is professional services. So it, it's enough it that it or, con or contingency commission? Yes. Well, I get a little nervous with contingency. People, okay. you know, they, people don't say too many of them. So professional yeah. services are good. Yeah. And of, of course, I, I, I fully, fully support bringing code uh, under the police department. But I think that physically they should stay where they are because they work hand in hand with the building coordinator, and uh, you know, oftentimes they have to share share information. So uh, physically, I would leave it with leave the code people where they are. There's also no room on the other um, side. Yeah, on the issue of uh, well, let me go to salaries because this is our biggest department, of course. And I'm so glad that we have, you know, it's taken a long time, but we have progressed and increased those salaries a bit to make us more competitive uh, and, and for the chief to be able to retain the talent that he's brought. But I noticed that um, in this spreadsheet that was given to us, the part-timers, four of which are in police and the three at the park, have no contribution for FRS. And I seem to remember that we had an FRS audit a couple of years, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. And it was found that we're required to offer or, or make FRS retirement contributions for part timers. So I'm wondering how that fell off um, of our chart here and want to make sure that we are doing uh, that contribution we're supposed to do. Paul, can you speak to that? Actually, uh, Dave and the police went through, and I believe Roseanne went through that and got a determination that it was for the part-time people that it was an optional choice. Um, somebody can fill in the color, but I believe it was, it was vetted through. But uh, with, you, with you bringing it up makes me wonder, because uh, I yeah, don't know I, seven years ago like you do, so. Yeah, I just remember that audit, and, and there might have even been a question about the, uh, the volunteer reserves that are, there's some quantitative amount that, the, that is considered for their service. Roseanne, did you want to answer that? Um, we had a donation uh, from the auditors. Yes, uh, we have the five uh, employees at the uh, at the uh, FRS contribution. I can hear. I'm gonna give to the other one. And uh, they, uh, they suggest that we didn't have to to contribute to the FRS. Um, based on that, uh, we checked with the I checked with the uh, others uh, HR, and uh, they all confirmed that uh, part timers don't have any any of the benefits, including FRS contribution, and we have to eliminate that. Wow, there might have been a change in the rules because I remember specifically having to, um, you know, catch up, do back, go backwards, and having to catch up on those contributions for yeah. the and parks. I, think, I don't know, but uh, right now we received the confirmation that yes, we don't have to uh, contribute to FRS. 
Okay. That's what we moved in. Okay. So then uh, I have a couple of questions on the police budget. Um, and and that might explain, or you might explain it, because I noticed that salaries are going to go up. First line salaries go up about ten thousand, but the retirement contributions go down about ten thousand. It just didn't. Uh, I don't. I didn't see the logic, but it might be this um, exception for the part timers. Yeah, I didn't go to the numbers specifically, but uh, that could be one of the reasons. If, if I can, Commissioner? Please. I actually had this conversation with Sharon the other day <clears throat> because that was something that caught my eye. You know, it's $12,000 difference. Um, yet the salaries are going up. What she explained to me was that not only was that taking away the FRS contribution, but going. It was originally a plan for whatever three, four years retroactively that, that, that now is not going to have to be done for those part timers. Okay. Okay. Let me flip through. I might have one more question. Let me just flip through real quick if you be patient. Um, the automobiles, and I, this was one of the questions in my email the page 14 that talks about insurance we're showing 21 automobiles but uh and thank you for that um roster vehicle fleet fleet inventory because when i looked at that fleet inventory we're showing 22 cars and two motorcycles so is this number right for the insurance that that I can't answer. I can tell you as far as police department, that's what our fleet is. Nick, uh, Commander, one one of the vehicles is the one that's uh, deadline that it's being used for parts. Okay. It's currently it's current one of one of the donated vehicles um, is, is deadline. So what we're doing is to keep the fleet. We're doing the parts from that vehicle to replace and, and 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 basically we just pay labor costs and we don't have to pay for any parts okay um and my, i think my last question is going to be on uh, page 19 of 20 it's education and training um accreditation a thousand dollars and i know you've been working towards that goal chief um I just wonder if that's, if you're cutting yourself too short. The, the accreditation fee in itself was a thousand dollars. And that was to purchase the software, uh, whatever, whatever was necessary to get that process going. Mm -hmm. As of right now, we're kind of in a holding pattern with everything going on, but that, that's the, that's the dollar amount that they gave us. That's not us saying this is probably what's going to take. They told us a thousand dollars. Okay, I understand that that's the fee, but there are certain requirements and benchmarks that need to be met. And, yes. And everything costs money. So I wonder if we're putting enough in there for, for that process. Amanda, I think what the commissioners, and she's, she's absolutely right. She's saying, for example, um, as, we go, as we're going through the accreditation problem, process, I'm sorry, you got to bring, bring a person who's an who's worked in that area of accreditation. They provide us ex areas of expertise. And I think also we're talking about if the actual, to participate uh, under the uh, Florida accreditation process, is there like a registration or a membership fee attached to that? So there, there may be additional costs, Commissioner. What we would do, and I, I, I like to be very conservative and prudent and the, the uh, the commander touched on it. You know, I was asked several times, well, why can't we use the money from the task force officer? I said, no, we're not touching it because it was, it was associated for that. You know, so same, I, I have kind of the same philosophy here. What I would do is I'm going to look at where we're at with COVID. And then at that point, maybe during uh, mid-year, I will discuss with the uh, either the, the finance director, 
the manager ab about bringing up additional funding as needed. I just don't want to ask the commission right now, oh, um, uh, we estimate 5,000 and, and then we're not, you know, it's not appropriate. So where we're at now with this whole COVID crisis, I want to have the, the, the minimum required and then as I, as I see progression, then I can do, we can do a mid-year adjustment. I just, uh, I, I just want to say one thing real quick about code. One of the things we're looking at revenue for code, and I spoke to the code chairman, I'm going to speak to other people, is, and I spoke to you, Commissioner Ross, about this, is that I want to incorporate additional, uh, additional codes from the county into the, uh, the administrative citation process. So we can, and what well, the idea now, because I've been giving it a lot of thought, is if we automatically adopt them, and I'm going to bring that forward to the commission, then we vote it as a whole, and we're empowered. And I already had this conversation with the county uh, county attorney's office, and I just I shouldn't even be talking about this. Topic. I just I want to show you that there's a lot of thought being given to this, and that will be additional revenue. Because these are, uh, you know, these are our administrative citations being issued at our scale, and we don't have to wait long term to address these problems. Right now, some of these issues will sit there for years. And then, I'm sorry, sorry, Commissioner. No, good. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification. That's all I got. Any other comments on? Yeah. Uh... Yes, I like to make a comment. Um, uh -huh. I am so glad that the code will be under under the police department because I think that's going to work. And I agree with Commissioner Kennedy that we'll be able to get this village is going to start looking better with code. And I, that's something that's very important to me. Um, there's not much I can say in the budget. I think that the chief has done a real good job with the budget. And when he finally finishes it, I think we're going to be on the budget. Um, but I would like to uh, congratulate the chief and his staff for what they have done. And I have, as a commissioner, full confidence that uh, you're gonna do a great job and we're gonna be able to get code under control. So again, I wanna thank you and your staff for what you have done. Commissioner Tudor, did you have anything to say? Um, the only thing I was gonna ask the chief and, uh, and Nick as well is that um, on page 17 of 20, underneath the COVID-19 supplies, um, I see there's nothing listed there and, and, and I don't know where where do you see in your budget if um, if you need additional supplies, PPEs, and such? Where would that fall into your budget? Because um, it looks like this may stick with us for for quite a while, and I want to make sure y'all have monies for that because um, some of the hardest hit individuals, as we're starting to see, is some of the first responders. Do we have an answer to that, Chief? Yeah, no, Commander. Yeah, I mean, as, as of right now, as I had mentioned before, with uh, <clears throat> with the former manager, you know, he specifically created that line item to be able to seek from FEMA reimbursement. What we are expending is, you know, coming out of other funds, whether it is operating supplies and stuff like that. But any bills that we get of that nature is stamped with, you know, COVID and that's what's sent off to GMS so that they can properly document it. As you said, there's no telling how long this is gonna stick around. There's no telling what is going to be associated with it in the, in the future. You know, we have already seen through the pandemic that started with three symptoms and escalated to seven or nine, wherever we're at now. You know, so it's, it's very hard to track that and you know as the chief had said he likes to be conservative and it would be very easy to sit here and go we need an extra fifty thousand dollars to fight covid but that's not a realistic thing to outset at this point Commissioner, to, to answer your question more precise um the funds that we use to buy the P, you know the pp gear that you saw the mass and all that we basically you know we, we're very conservative we we used um, the funds that um, that we had for uniforms, equipment, some contingencies, and we were able to immediately get the the, the equipment and 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 uh, and resources as needed. We are not. I want to make this crystal clear. We are not funded at all for these type of issues. Um, what you see in in that and and the commander touched on it. 
Um, we were just, because we were prudent and conservative, we just had the money. But what you see there is a special category created so we can later on be able to identify what, what was spent. That's what I was, uh, uh, what was spent to get FEMA reimbursement. That's what I was, I was explained by, by the former manager. If I can also add to that, I wouldn't count on any money coming back. The league is fighting that now with Carlos Jimenez. It's probably, if he decides to share the money coming into this, to the county, it's gonna go by population, it looks like. So I wouldn't think we're gonna get very much money back. Go ahead, Commissioner Ross. Yeah, I just had one more comment I, I forgot, neglected to mention is, um, you know, we signed this uh, mutual aid, uh, agreement with uh, for Everbridge for the oh. notification. And at the beginning of COVID, I dug out my copies of the of the of that, and I shared it with uh, I think it was with the attorney and with the chief uh, in case that was going to be a good uh, resource for them during the crisis. And well, as I tried to bring it up right now side issue is I tried to bring it up right now from the website. Our, the website shows the resolution 2018-32, but the agreement is not attached, so I can't really give you the details of it. Um, but I can tell you in that conversation that we had at the beginning of COVID, uh, it was discovered that we needed to have um, SysOps in place in order to use the service. And so the commission in 2018 approved it, said, yes, we're entering into this agreement mutual with the city and, uh, and the Florida, De Florida Department of Emergency Management. And then somebody stuck it in a drawer and we didn't actually enact, we didn't actually put all the systems in place that we need to access the service. Um, I know that there's, um, they're like separate portals and there's a portal you can open for the village to have catered um, specific area specific messages sent. There's an added, there's an added service amount for that. Um, but the reason I bring it up is because we may need a professional to help us come up with some uh, sysops so that we can actually use the service that we agreed to in a time of, uh, in, in, in an urgent time. So that might be something that we should budget for, uh, for the chief and, the, and uh, Nick for your consideration. Commissioner, that wouldn't come out of, that system is, doesn't work through Everbridge, right? Because I think, I think what you and I, I and if I'm wrong, please, uh, you know, my, the, my memory sometimes is, is not as accurate as it used to be, but the Everbridge program, that was approved a long time, a while ago. That was, it, it didn't work because it was the, the very basic program, correct? Is that what, that was the issue? Was the very basic program, right. But, yes. but even the very basic program needed to have system operation. You know, it needed to have another element of how are we gonna work this thing? And we have to have that piece on file with the state. And only because it's emergency services or emergency communications do I think maybe it's appropriate to have it in the police department. But it might be better suited in the administrative administration's budget. Any other comments? Well, do we want to continue or do we want to adjourn for another day to continue this? Is it, could, could we, could we, since we're doing it tonight, would it take too long to do code? I mean, could we do it in a half hour? Since, since code. Can you, you hear me, Madam Mayor? Yeah, we did. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Is it possible? I mean, if we can do it in a half hour, the code, since that is part of the police department, I think that would be good. I thought we were discussing code with the police department. Oh, I, thought, I didn't think we, okay. Do you have any comments on code? No, no, it was good. Okay. I didn't think they were. Am I wrong on that? We... I didn't think we mentioned that. Okay. Can everybody give me an idea if you want to adjourn to another 
Oh, I, I, just to just to touch on what Dan just said. I mean, we may had comment on code, yeah, but to his, I think what he's suggesting is we didn't present that actual budget. We just Correct. sort of lumped it in one conversation because we talked about bringing it into the police department. But I think he's correct that we didn't Good. Yes. get an actual presentation on that yeah. section. Yeah, and I, and I think I think with a half hour, since the chief did cover a lot of stuff, I think we can you know do it in a half hour. I like to get code combined. Code? Yeah. Any public comments on code? Again? I don't see anybody raising hands. Well, we did the comments. Public yeah, comments. There were public comments that yeah, there was public comments. We we did comments. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. Okay. Does anybody want to speak about code? I think Paul. Paul, Paul I'd like to hear. Yeah, you. I just briefly. I think you, we've already covered the 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 supervisor position uh, is being filled. I did notice there's a an error on the uh, schedule. Uh, that forty one thousand that we tried to give the chief. Uh, is actually already calculated. So I'll clean that up. That's the only thing on the, uh, the budget workshop that that 41,000, it shows a reduction. That's a mistake. I found Paul, Paul one of the things, um, I, I'd like we'll discuss in, when we have a chance is try to get, uh, put in the budget so we can, um, enact some of the initiatives we want to enact and to provide uniforms for the employees. So, but yep. we'll talk about that. Yeah, we, we'll clean that up uh, for next draft. Okay. Any other comments on code? Commissioner Samaria, do you have? No, some? no, I, I just, I'm, I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to where the code department gets put done correctly. I'm, I'm really excited about that. It's going to be under the police department. I think it was a couple of commissioners back that really had the idea of it. Um, but I think it's going to be a good, a good fit, and uh, I'm looking forward to it, especially with all the problems that we had in cold. Is it going to take, Chief? I know. Is it going to? Are we going to be able to see? Is the residents going to be able to see that cold is really picking up? Are, I mean, they going to be able to see any improvements right away, well, or is it going to take time? It's got to get better, Dan. I know it, it is. I know. Show. I know. No. <laughs> Technically, um, just to answer your question, I don't want to have expect. Um, I want to have realistic expectations, yes. you know, little by little, we're kind of creating a, a, you know, what we call foundation. Okay. And, um, obviously the department, uh, I won't be taking official for October 1st, but I will be, be, you know, enacting some of these changes as immediately, um, I'm waiting for the new code enforcement officer to come on board August 3rd. I want to sit down, have a discussion, and then at that point, I'm going to sit with both court enforcement officers. I'm going to lay lay out what what our vi uh, goals, objectives, vision, mission, it are, and and kind of tell them, listen, you know, as of October 1st, you know, you'll be, you know, what's going to be happening. But I I've, I've already I've already had discussions with the chairman of the court enforcement board. I want. Uh, to make sure that they have Zoom meetings with them and, and with the members of the board um, so we can get, they can get the input. Um, there's a lot of concern how they present cases. Um, I also want to, you know, immediately uh, in, implement scheduling so we can see them out there as quickly as possible. So yeah, there will be some immediate actions taken, question, but, you know, there's also short and midterm and obviously long-term things that we want to accomplish. Okay, great. Is there any way possible that at the August 3rd or the, at the commission meeting that we have the opportunity to meet the new code officer? Uh, yes, of course. Okay, yeah, okay. That's what I would like to see, yeah. Vice Mayor? I'd like to say one more thing about code, if I may. Um, uh, Chief, uh, just a little kind of procedural suggestion, I guess. Um, it might be a really handy thing for the community if there were a central email address that people could report code issues to the village. I, I get, I'm not complaining about residents 
coming to me about code things, I'm happy to sort of point them along in the right direction. But, you know, some days I get bombarded with things, especially on weekends when no one's in, when code's not in the village now, and I know you're going to change that. But I think it might be a good thing for residents if they had a centralized place, uh, that code at email address, if that's going to be designated for, I think there should be an email address designated specifically for that, because there seems to be enormous, and, and let people know what that is so residents are aware of where they should be sending uh, emails about code issues. I think it would help streamline some things. Anybody else? No. Well, what's your pleasure? Shall we go to the next item or shall we adjourn this for another date? I well, vote. real quick, I think building could we be do need to do a date certain. And can building be done? I mean, building, building is a very. Sure, my basic thing, building. Um, not really. There are some points on the building that uh, we need to. Okay. okay. Come back. Okay. Just, just a suggestion. Um, are we? If we're going to end it tonight, are we going to? Is this a? Do we have to pick a date and time now? Yes. We're going to continue yes. this meeting. Uh, okay. We have to to uh, right now uh, uh, come up with a date and the time. Okay. What day? How about Tuesday the 28th, next Tuesday. 28th. At what particular time, uh, Commissioner Kennedy? I, I, six started at six. I, well, I think Will prefers if we start a little bit later. 6.30 is usually the time that we start the special meetings or, or workshop. Okay. How's that, Commissioner Tudor? Yeah, 6.30 works everybody? best. 6.30 works best for me because I... I agree. No, I agree. Okay, then we could uh, continue this meeting. We don't adjourn, correct, Roseanne? We yes. just continue the meeting on the 28th at 6.30. Is that correct? Yes. I think we adjourn and we just join up again. Yes. Yeah. We can do both. Yeah. I, I didn't hear you, Roseanne. Yes, we can adjourn and, and start the, the sequence, the next meeting again. Okay, take a motion okay. on the So is that, is that official? Well, did we, is it official? Do we need to determine that? Are we looking at Tuesday the 28th at 6.30 p.m.? Right, yeah. there's no I objections, right? I have no, I have no problem with that. Paul? Okay. Can we uh, the, the only problem I have is the, the getting a new budget out to you. Uh, that's gonna be really tight uh, to circulate it, get it, well, you know. We're just gonna pick up where we left off. That's fine, and I, I might I might have something to. What you don't you know, have done is okay. We have. I'll see what I can pull off. I'm not sure. So you should work the the. Uh, well, and, and if you on the other workshop on the August 13th. I yeah, guess. that's fine. I'm not worried about that. We have yeah. a motion. Hey, Paul, if you want to, if the things that we did tonight, if you can get to work on that, if you want to, but all we're going to do is pick up where we left off. So I think we're good to go. Yeah, I just I just didn't want to okay. have a okay. half. To, Corrections. Very good. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn, Ginny. Okay, a second. I'll second. second it. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Thank you all. Good night, Good night everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you, Mike. Be safe. Don't forget to wear your mask going outside. Yeah, put those masks on, please, everybody. Outside. Everybody outside.